Well, um, thank you. Uh, as Frank said, my name's uh, Clint Ages. I'm a freelance software developer uh, based here in, uh, in London, England. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction of what uh, IoT is uh, and certainly what Microsoft Azure IoT offerings are. Uh, we're then uh, a, a sh short snippet on uh, IoT solutioning and understanding how you can harness this technology. And then we'll look at a couple of uh, real world examples of using the Azure IoT. Um, so yeah, as I say, I'm going to talk to you about connecting your physical environment to digital world and roadmap to IoT solutioning. Let's get started. The first thing really is what is IoT? What does it mean? Uh, well, IoT, Internet of Things, is a network of uh, internet connected things, devices. Um, it communicates sensor data up to up to the clouds and uh, for central processing, and you can connect uh, you know a few sensors, uh, you know hundreds of sensors, even millions of sensors. Um, typically, they're embedded devices, so it's a small uh, microprocessor, uh, typically with a couple of sensors connected, a bit of humidity, vibration, temperature, a GPS sensor, that sort of thing. Um, these devices, they're our IoT devices, and they take that sensor data, they connect it via a network uh, up to um, the clouds, and that data they send is the telemetry, um, so that is the, the, the data that gets sent up to the cloud. And as I say, it could be acceleration, velocity, it could be uh, heat, temperature, humidity, it could be a GPS location uh, for doing geofencing of, uh, of, uh, of your trucks that are out on the road. Um, all those sensor values get uh, sent by telemetry up to the cloud, and then in the cloud we have the Azure IoT Hub, um, which streams that data in, and then it's used to uh, to process that data and uh, and give you the insights. Uh, maybe um, you know uh, detecting where your trucks are to make sure they're going to the correct locations, or detecting uh, the building uh, environment. Do we need to turn the heating on or the air conditioning, that sort of thing? Um, also, as your IoT hub can send signals back down to your uh, IoT devices um, to you know change the setting. Maybe uh, set the alert that uh, the temperature goes above a certain uh, threshold um, to raise the alarm or to open the windows. Um, maybe it's uh, to change the GPS geofencing um, uh, geofencing uh, of your trucks to make sure that uh, they stay within the correct area. So that is what IoT is. But let's look at uh, um, how IoT uh, can be used to enable your business um, to to uh, to grow in the future and to uh, take advantage of the, uh, the 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 changes in IoT. Certainly over the last few years. Uh, there's been an introduction of uh, cloud computing. We've all heard about it, uh, um, somebody else's uh, computers in the clouds. Um, but IoT is now you know, connecting to that, uh, that cloud. And essentially, we're, we're globally available, virtually unlimited compute resource in the cloud. So rather than just having a computer that's in your, your, own, uh, your own office, you have this uh, resource up in the cloud. So uh, the clouds, uh, you connect your IoT devices, you can ingest millions uh, of data points every second from all your uh, IoT enabled sensors and devices and you can manage them centrally as well so you can manage them in one place to manage all these sensors could be anywhere in the world and then we move on to uh, having IoT on the edge and the AI so uh, we can have the intelligence in the cloud to run a mach machine learning model that can look at our sensor data and make intelligent decisions and then send um, signals back down to our IoT devices but we can also take that machine learning model and put it on the edge. We can move it down to IoT devices, which means that we can make decisions locally, which means we get faster turnaround time on making the decision. So it hasn't got to transit back to the cloud um, before a decision is made. And then finally, we have, as, uh, as mentioned in the keynote, we have the, uh, the new digital twins, digital twins technology. Uh, it's an opportunity to replicate uh, um, your, your IoT environments. Um, maybe it's your building or your, your fleet of trucks. Um, they're out on the roads. You can replicate that digitally in the cloud. Um, so you can then look at if we change this over here, how is that going to affect the system? Um, and you can design your system without having to you know, roll out um, hundreds, if not millions of IoT devices. You can check it and make sure your system works in the cloud you know, and, um, and works for your environment as you need. But IoT projects, they can be complex, they can be hard because. You know, I've worked with, with many IoT clients, uh, and as uh, Microsoft uh, Azure IoT team have, uh, in real business um, applications and look at the benefits that it can bring. But to roll out an IoT project, it can be quite uh, quite long timelines. Uh, and the reason being is because not only do you have your IoT um, software um, that's on your device, uh, you've got to design the hardware, you've got to look and pick the correct sensors. 
you got to make sure that the, the sensor you pick uh, work for the uh, the data you're trying to track. There's no point having a, a sensor that can track a temperature, um, you know, not to 100 degrees Celsius. But then you're trying to look at the melting point of uh, of uh, aluminium, for example. It's not going to work. So you need to get the uh, the correct sensors, test them, make sure they work. You then need to write the software that's on the uh, OT device that's sending it to the cloud. You then need to worry about the network connection. It's going to be over a hardware Ethernet connection. It's going to be Wi-Fi. Is it going to be Bluetooth? Is it going to be uh, over a radio uh, frequency back up to the cloud? So once you've built your proof of concept, you have your proof of concept, it works. You get to sign off from the, from the board to then go and uh, roll this out across the, um, the, your, uh, your infrastructure. Then comes the hard part because you then need to provision all these devices, you need to manage them, manage their connections to the cloud, manage their connections to the OT hub. And then once you've done that, you need to you need to look after them. You need to make sure that, uh, that, that the sensors are sending the correct uh, um, values uh, up to the clouds. And then you also, now you have all that data, all that telemetry that's being streamed into IoT Hub. Uh, you need to then look at the insights. What are you going to do with that data? How is the business going to, to use this data and connect to the back end system so that you can gain the insights and the business advantage of, uh, of all this IoT data that you're bringing up? Just look at how we could solve uh, these typical uh, obstacles using uh, the Azure IoT services. Um, the Azure IoT services have the ability um, to build this comprehensive uh, environment for you and help you uh, connect all your devices um, to the cloud, uh, whether it's just a, a few devices, a few hundred, or a few million around the world. You know, Azure has got data centers all over the world, and you can use that resource and that cloud. So the following capabilities are part of the uh, IoT offering from, from Azure. Uh, we have device connectivity and management uh, that allows us to connect our, our millions of devices and simultaneously um, manage them uh, as they, they're connected to the Azure IoT Hub. Make sure that the security of each IoT device is uh, is there and it's not being uh, compromised in any way, which means data that could be getting sent is, is incorrect. And then you com communicate uh, back to the devices to make sure that you can set the, uh, the values, uh, et cetera, uh, within the device as well. Then you've got the uh, data ingestion and then your command and control. So that basically is uh, making sure that you've got your bi-directional communication. So you can talk to the device, you can talk back to you as, as well. Um, and then uh, you can maybe, you've got devices that work in over cellular and they only uh, connect uh, intermittently because you don't want to use up uh, too much cellular data and that connection. So you can work that the, uh, the um, data ingestion and command and control can help you uh, control those devices as well. Uh, and then you can act on that data in real time as it comes into your IoT Hub and send it to the correct areas of Azure IoT behind the scenes. We have stream processing. That is our live um, in real time processing of the, uh, the uh, telemetry that's coming up from IoT devices, um, which means that we can stream that in and view the data in real time as it's happening from our millions of devices around the world. We have workflow management. Uh, that is uh, where we uh, take that uh, the insights of that data. So once we we've got the data from our devices, we've, we've streamed it in, we've processed it, we stored it in a, in a database, be that Cosmos or SQL uh, database. Um, then the workflow automation is where your back end systems, your business um, tools you currently have, be that uh, CRM system, um, be that uh, 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 an SMS system that sends messages out to drivers or technicians that are out on site. Um, your back-end systems can take that, uh, that the insights from the learnings of our IoT devices and use those uh, internally within your business. Because what's the point of having the data if you can't use it? Uh, building on that is our dashboards and visualizations. So you can take the IoT data and, uh, and look at the real-time stream analytics, and you can build a, a powerful visual um, a tool uh, using something like Power BI or a Blazor web app or a Xamarin mobile app that can look at that data in real time as it happens, uh, as you see the, these uh, these values change from your, your IoT sensors in the field. But as I say, sometimes you could be building maybe uh, a building management system. Well, there's some of those have been built already. So the extra bit on, the, on as well is the fact that the Azure IoT team they built pre-configured solutions. So rather than starting from scratch and designing this whole system from scratch, maybe someone's done it in the past. Maybe the Microsoft and Azure team have helped a company like yours in the past build these systems. So there's pre-configured solutions, which is basically a cookie cutter solution. Um, you can take that and then you tweak and edit and make it fit your, your needs as, a, as an individual business. Um, and that means your time to uh, time to live is a lot shorter as well. 
just look at if you was to start a new solution, you you starting out fresh and you want to uh, think about how you're going to uh, build your solution. It can be quite complex. How am I going to make this whole solution come together? Well, we highly recommend um, to use the Azure IoT uh, reference architecture. Um, you can find this on the uh, the, the Docs website, so on Microsoft uh, Docs, and uh, it will give you an idea of uh, how to build your solution out. So you start on the left with your things, the the devices you have in the field. Would that be uh, your IoT devices that are, are connecting up and sending data? On the edge of that, uh, you've got the IoT Cloud Gateway, your IoT Hub, uh, which ingests all that data from your millions of sensors around the world. And then inside your insights in the center there is how you're going to stream that data in, where you're going to store it. You're going to store it in a Cosmos or an SQL database, table storage, blob storage, if it's images, that sort of thing. And then it, that processing is also used to build out your, um, uh, your reporting tools as well. And then obviously you've got all the data, you need to take action. The action is your automated or maybe even a manual uh, process. Um, and that is your Power BI, that is your, your integration with your CRM system, the integration with your, your Azure Maps for mapping where your trucks are um, uh, around uh, making your deliveries, etc. So if you think about the I2 reference architecture, you've got your things, your insights, your actions. We'll come back to this uh, architecture in a moment. Let's look at a real life um, uh, project that was, uh, was uh, brought on board. Um, with uh, using uh, Microsoft Azure IoT services. So this uh, is a proof concept. Uh, There's a team of five engineers who have given 48 hours to uh, invent a solution. Um, uh, and they come up with building a better mousetrap, a smart mousetrap. Now, I will say this was a proof of concept. So no mice uh, or, or other rodents were uh, injured or hurt during the, uh, the building this proof of concept. But we have hard hats and full PPE uh, for the COVID times. Um, but let's look at how they, uh, how they designed uh, and went about uh, looking at this project. Well, first you need to start looking at the opportunities. What are you as a business trying to look for? What are you trying to build that's going to work uh, for you and, uh, and make sure that uh, the business actually is going to do this? It's not going to be uh, put in the bin of uh, internet of crap, uh, of something that's connected to the internet that really shouldn't be connected to the internet. So if we look at this, uh, they looked at uh, the fact that, that the rat and mice uh, spread a lot of diseases. People don't like seeing them around their buildings. Um, the traps are monitored and the technician has to go out to uh, to visit the traps, so visit the sites and, uh, and make uh, regular inspections, which requires time and pay of a technician, requires a mileage of the vehicles to do that. And obviously, you know, a vehicle, if it's not an electric vehicle, it's got the emissions and the, the environmental impact of that trip. Um, maybe they get there and the traps are empty, so it's a completely wasted trip, all that time, money uh, and effort and the, the, the carbon emissions of that truck going there just to check um, could be completely wasted. The business owners become frustrated um, if the trap's not empty. You know, maybe you decide to only go once a week, but suddenly, you know, all the rodents turn up and they all get trapped and the traps are full. Um, so, um, you know, the business uh, occupiers of that building could become very upset. Um, business potential customers, um, you know, may get upset if the building is, is uh, occupied with too many rodents. You're not clearing them quick enough. So let's let's report this uh, this back. Um, then they looked at the, uh, the uh, industry. Uh, it's obviously quite a big industry. Um, you know, 12 billion, it's got an annual growth of 3%. So as an industry, it's growing quite quickly. So how can we, as a, if we were the, the pretend uh, road and capture company, um, how can we um, take on this, uh, this challenge and, and make it better? Well, like I said, let's go back to our reference architecture. Let's look at the things. Let's look at the uh, insights and actions. So the things, we can have a smart mousetrap. Uh, to track our rodents, um, uh, but we need to roll it out across a building and then across many buildings in the city. So we need to make sure that uh, we have the ability to, to securely connect it to the cloud. Connectivity options, do we have Wi-Fi in the building or do we need to use uh, uh, 3G and the cellular system to see data in the cloud? The insights, the cloud gateway, in our case, Azure IoT Hub, is uh, what was used to securely uh, accept that data, provide data management and capabilities, and then stream process that information and consume the data um, so that we can use it in our back-end systems as well. And obviously put the raw data in storage um, so it can be used later for uh, analytics in slow time, not in real time. You can use um, that analytics later as well and run machine learning models across it. And then obviously we need the actions. We need the user inf interface, um, like maybe Power BI um, or a, a Xamarin mobile application that can look at the data. And but also your your mobile app can be used by the technician when they're setting up the devices in the field. They can set where this device is, is in the building and set its GPS locations. 
and give it a device ID, or from a mobile app using um, uh, Digital Twins and Azure IoT Hub to connect it all together. So that is a reference architecture. So they started there, but then they went on and, and built it up. And we can look at uh, the fact that uh, they took the things, uh, in this case was a, um, a Raspberry Pi, and uh, connected a, uh, the, the mouse trap with a, a trigger and sent that data up to Azure IoT Hub. They didn't use stream analytics to stream that data in real time. They stored it in an SQL database and then used Power BI to reason over that data and give a visual model um, to the uh, the back end staff, be that the technicians that are out in the field, or it could be the, the staff in the office that are, are managing the, 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 the suite of uh, IoT sensors. But how does it actually work? How does uh, this, uh, you know, I, know, I know what you're thinking, well, how's this smart mousetrap actually working? Um, surely it's a really complex system. Well, actually, it's not. Um, it was quite simply just a Raspberry Pi, um, in this case, uh, Raspberry Pi 2, this project's uh, a little old now. Um, and all they did was put a switch. Um, on the on the mouse trap, as you can see in the image there, and then that switch was connected to the Raspberry Pi. It had a, a little LED light to say the fact that the the, the, uh, the sensor had been tripped, and uh, the, the the trap had a a, a a rodent in it, and um, and that was sent up to uh, to the Azure IoT Hub. So you know you may think that um, you know building an IoT solution, the actual hardware is quite complex. Maybe you're a software engineer and you know you're used to back end and and um, stuff. But actually, the IoT side isn't as difficult as you think. Um, so you know, it's coming up with that uh, that sensor and connecting it to um, to your device. Um, that telemetry data is then sent up to the Azure IoT Hub, as we said before, and it helps build those insights of uh, of where uh, this this sensor is, or where that uh, that trap is, and obviously, then we have our Power BI dashboard. And if we take a quick look at that. Um, the one they built out. So obviously, this is a proof of concept, but the one they built out uh, for. Uh, this project, so you can see, it's a fairly simple. Um, it shows a map of where the uh, the devices are when they've been triggered. Then it shows a floor plan in the building where that trap is within the building, um, and then it shows uh, some business insights data: the, the average time to uh, empty and reset a trap, the number of times that trap's been uh, been triggered by a rodent, um, and average time to clear. So you can imagine here that the trap is uh, is triggered, and it can send a signal to the technician who can be driving past. Uh, near the building and stop by reset the trap therefore keeping the client uh, the building owner uh, a lot happier because the traps being cleared promptly and, and quickly and being reset also you know if a trap is uh, it's not being triggered very often but they're still reporting um, uh, rodent sightings around the building you can then see well they're not being triggered let's move the traps around the building and put them in different places once we have that though we can then move on to how do we roll that out from one building to ten buildings to hundreds of buildings around the world but then we can start to model our system using Azure Digital Twins, uh, we can start to model a building. So we can look at a new building site uh, or a new area that we're trying to protect uh, with our um, smart mousetrap system. And we could look at how we put the sensors, where we put them. We could send it some test data um, uh, and use the Azure Digital Twins to try and model our system uh, and how we're going to uh, integrate this, this complex system within the environment that we intend to install it. Um, and from that, we could, without rolling out and sending lots of devices down to site, we can test and make sure it's going to work for that site before we do any uh, on-site installation and building work. But, you know, that's enough for mouse traps. The rodents all okay, the hard hats works. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting for me. I like ice cream uh, and uh, these ice cream trucks, um, they, they uh, frequent cities all over the world. These ones are from uh, Toronto in, uh, in Canada. Um, and the ice cream trucks travel around the city. Uh, as we all know, they play music that, to let you know um, that uh, the ice cream truck is on its way. When it stops, the music stops, and then the, the salesperson starts to sell um, the ice cream on a nice hot summer's day. Um, but the learnings from that is the fact that the driver needs to know where they're going to drive the truck, how they're going to uh, move around the city to get to the correct places at the right time. Um, and they get to know it over years. But what if you're a new, new, uh, new, you know, vendor? You want to get your own ice cream truck and set up uh, new. We could use IoT um, and bring it to your your uh, your business. And the way you do that is you can map where the uh, where you go on your travels and how much sales. So if you think about it, in this case, when the music stops and the truck stops, therefore you you've stopped at a location. You then start to make sales. You can track those sales. So you can use the trigger of the music and the vehicle stopping to GPS. And a sound sensor, for example, into a Raspberry Pi and uh, install that data. 
and then you can log the sales that you make in your CRM system, and then you can connect those uh, those oh sorry your EPP system connect those two um, data sources together when you're back in the office later, and then see well actually I stopped here at this time and stopped there at that time. But the next week, you go a different route and track all that data and store it together and therefore decide which is the best route to travel around the city to make sure you get the best sales. That's um, the two um, solutions that I want to cover very briefly. Uh, and um, if you want to uh, learn more about the resources uh, in my talk uh, today, you can go to ak.ms slash OT10 resources. Um, the code for the uh, for the mousetrap and others, uh, you can go to ak.ms OT10. And it's up there on uh, GitHub, and then all the resources um, for the program uh, are there on uh, aka.msotlp. However, I know what you're thinking. It's like, well, how do I learn more, Cliff? What do I need to do? I'm going to become an, uh, an Azure uh, IoT expert. We well, can head out to aka.msot10 slash learn. That takes you to the uh, Microsoft Learn portal, and there's a, 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 a predefined course there for you to follow and uh, become an AAT, um, uh solution architect. Um, as well, and that will help you um, go towards becoming Azure AT, AZ220 OT Developer Certification. That will mean you can get certified and become a certified Microsoft engineer, uh, which means you can get hired in the field. You can stay ahead and uh, get recognized for the fact that you know your stuff and you uh, you know what you're doing with uh, with OT and uh, and Azure. Now, it doesn't mean you need to be an embedded systems engineer. That was my background. Um, but you know, if you're a software developer, the cloud side of it could be the area you specialize in as well. So head out there, you can go and look at the certification at ak.msot10 slash certification. And uh, if you want some resources, maybe Microsoft Learn, uh, you're reading through that, and there's a lot of documentations and little short video clips. There's a fantastic study uh, uh, guide put together by Paul DiCarlo, one of the uh, IoT uh, team. Uh, out to ak.ms uh, it cert guides but if like me um reading is is not your thing and you want your more of a visual reader you for kind of youtube and twitch kind of streams then head out to bit.ly plural site az220 and there's a fantastic plural site uh, all the courses out there and that whole theme um for, from pete gallagher and, and jürgen and others that are, are putting together um to help teach you the whole az220 course as well if uh, IoT, uh, you, you know, you're know you not quite ready for it, and obviously you can head out to Microsoft Learn, and uh, Microsoft Learn has um, subjects you can learn from all of Azure and C Sharp and any language uh, within the uh, .NET platform, and um, you can learn there as well. So it's a fantastic learning resource. Uh, I go there very often and keep up my skill set uh, by using resources and, uh, and stuff there. But that's enough for me. My name is Clifford Ages, and uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about, about connecting your physical environment to your digital world, roadmap to IOC solution. Thank you.